Welcome to day 397 of our DSO journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember, these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in CloudFeed. Or should I say, should we say DSOFI now, since it's really DSOFI? They rebranded oh, as DSOFI. We should right? rename that, right? Let me add yeah. that. So every morning I now say DSOFI. All right. Um, also, so thanks. welcome back, first of all. Uh, I mean, yesterday we had Darian Parrish and Salil Sethi replace you. And I think they might have done a better job uh, combined, at least. So now you're wearing a Superman shirt. So you act like you're all Superman, but obviously you weren't Superman yesterday because if you were, you would have showed up for the video. Fine, I'm done. I'm done. No more. Not the same thing, but not let me thing. quickly text Salil and Darian. <laughs> let me text Salil and Darian really quick. Hold on. Uh, they said they can't make it. So let's just get on with the show. And I keep doing these videos every day, every single day. Yep, we do. All right, we're so, committed to it. All right, so what was the diamond question of the day today, Brian? Yeah, so answer this question and get some diamonds. Uh, just reply under this video on DSO, and we'll give you three or four diamonds if we'd like your response. Uh, well thought out responses are appreciated. Uh, what's your favorite DSO node, and what would you do? differently or what would you implement on that node? And I'm gonna just say my favorite DSO node is NFTZ and that's because we're building it. I know that's a little bit biased. Um, and what would I do? Uh, everything we're doing, we have a roadmap and we're super excited about what we're working on over the course of the next several months. Uh, 2022 is gonna be big. I would overtake OpenSea as the largest NFT marketplace on the internet. Let's do it. Anyhow, speaking of another node that I really, really like, the social world, uh, they're like one of the top nodes. All of a sudden, they, you know, they're at the very top as far as I think posts go. And they have just implemented two new features, two really cool new features. One, emojis. You can now post emojis in your post. You don't have to copy and paste an emoji. They actually have a little emoji under your post by the YouTube and uh all the other links underneath when you add videos. If you click the emoji, it's gonna bring up a box with all these different emojis that you can use to add to your post, which I think is an amazing thing. I know, Brian, I know you love using emojis and you had to go to Google, search for copy and paste emojis and then copy them and then paste them in there. So this is gonna save you a lot of time as it, it's gonna save a lot of people a lot of time. Definitely, I love this feature. And the other feature is every profile now has a link to your NFTZ zone. So go to somebody's profile on DSocial World, you'll see under their profile, under the describing text, you'll see a little link there that directs you to that individual's NFTZ zone. And yeah. we love it. Uh, thanks DSocial World for collaborating with us on this. And we're going to be sending some traffic to the social world as well with NFTZ. Yeah. And I made a post earlier about collaboration earlier today about how valuable it is and, and how important it is to for different, different teams to kind of back each other up and help each other out and work together. And this is just the start of uh, one of the projects we're collaborating on. Uh, we're collaborating with, with Ado from the social world uh, on a vast array of things, but uh, this is the start. Uh, we also are collaborating with 3D Social to do some really cool things uh, at NFTZ. So stay tuned. Um, we're always open to collaborations, always open to talking to uh, other teams about what we can do. And this is going to be definitely a trend that you're going to see over the course of the next several months. Definitely. And speaking of collaborations, uh, DSOFI, formerly CloudFeed, is discussing a new, creating a new web app, Brian. Yeah, so number one, they're talking about creating a web app. And I, th I think what they're trying to do is to kind of bridge that gap. A lot of people love DSO on the web because that's how it started out. So they want to appeal to those people as well. And they're, they're considering three options, they said. And the first option is building a new web app from the ground up, which is very difficult. It's going to take some time. Uh, the second option is cloning Diamond app pretty much, and then iterating upon it, adding features, whatever the features they have on CloudFeed over onto Dime, the Diamond app like node. Uh, and number three, which is my favorite, is collaborating. 
and they suggested collaborating with Overcloud. And I could not be more excited to see this because, of course, if you were paying attention in the last week or so, Don Hardman and Moss, Mossify, they went back and forth about some things. Uh, Overcloud's having difficulty getting funding and they need funding to continue building. And what they're doing is really great. Uh, I think a collaboration between CloudFeed and Overcloud could be a really great way to kind of provide Overcloud with the resources they might need to continue to build out. So I love that idea. Uh, if if DSOFI can do that, I think I would be the biggest proponent of it. Yeah, I, I'm going with number three too. I, I mean, cloning Diamond app, you can do that, but I don't think it really has much benefit for the community in general. Uh, I think you... If you're going to do that, you might as well just kind of link to Diamond App. I, I think a collaboration with Overcloud is definitely the best option. Sure, you could build up, build up from the ground and create your own web experience. But why do that when there's already a really great web app out there in Overcloud? Yeah, absolutely. And also, DSOFI has some other news. Uh, well, I guess they asked the question, which kind of alludes to maybe some other news. They asked the users on DSO yesterday, uh, if we would want to be able to post on DSO and Twitter from one single app at once. Uh, so it looks like they might be integrating DSO or integrating Twitter somehow and maybe allowing for cross posting. So if you make a post on Twitter, it goes to DSO and vice versa. That's a really good idea, I think. And it's probably a good idea for DSO 5 to be thing and open themselves up to those outside of DSO as well. Yeah, so if Twitter doesn't, with, if Twitter with Elon Musk doesn't decide to integrate with DSO, users on Twitter can essentially do so if they use an app created by DSOFI and they could post to both Twitter and the DSO blockchain. So in effect, you're still decentralizing your posts. Exactly. And story, uh, this is still kind of in line with, I guess, DSOFI and that revolve from DSOFI is also working with Design Style and Story, they talked about their funding and they received a grant from Octane Fund. They didn't receive the equity investing, but they did receive a grant, but they did receive equity funding from a VC outside of DSO and they received over $250,000. So this is proof that, you know, there are VCs out there interested in investing, in investing into projects that are being built on Web3 built on the DSO blockchain. And Story is a prime example of how if you try hard enough, you know the right people. If you reach out to enough people and, and you know cold call investors and push your product, you're going to be able to raise money. There's people out there who are very interested in building on Web3. So DSO projects have a lot of potential when it comes to raising money. It doesn't just have to be through the Octane Fund. It could be through other venture capitalists as well. Yeah, and I think one important thing that story has that some some might not have right away is the fact that that DSO, that story is very differentiated from everything else. So I mean you have a lot of a lot of sites that are built like Diamond that are nodes kind of like Diamond. Story is completely away from that. So as a venture capitalist, they're looking for something unique with a new idea. A, a new ambition. And I think that's why they were able to get that funding so rapidly. And we've been pretty close to Luis and Lucy uh, since, the be since the beginning at DSO. And I didn't even know about their how what their funding encompassed. So this is news to us. And I'm, I'm happy they kind of put that out there. Yeah. And also, if you go to um, Crunchbase, DSO now has a profile on there. And NFTZ is listed as one of the companies that Octane Fund invest into. So if you own a DSO project, go to Crunchbase. Anybody can edit it and add your investment that you receive from DSO if you'd like. Uh, I think it's good. It's good for your company in that it shows that you're able to raise capital at a certain valuation. And it's also good for the DSO ecosystem as a whole, showing that DSO is actually investing into some of these projects and that these projects are receiving investments. So definitely go to check out Crunchbase add your company and add your, the investments you receive if you, if you want to be public about that stuff. Right. Yeah, totally agree. So Nordian made a really interesting post talking about how there's a need for, you know, like these explainer videos about DSO to kind of quickly teach people about DSO, how you sign up, what you can use it for, et cetera. And both Fast Freddy and Mossify 
responded to Nordian's long post talking about this, saying that they do have ex uh, explainer videos coming, they're in the works, and they plan to preview some of them in the near future. Fist Freddy was a little skeptical about sharing, sharing, I guess, or I guess oversharing too much too soon, but he seems to be heading down a path where he does intend to share some of what, what they're working on. Yeah, and, and I, I think these videos are going to be important. Uh, I, I know we've been waiting for them. I know the community has put out a lot of stuff. I know we're working on some things uh, in the help section of our, our node. But I, I think we need some professional videos that can really be kind of go viral uh, as well as just act as a starting point for those that are being onboarded to the protocol. Yeah, so Brian and I have talked a lot about a lot about you don't need to have necessarily have nodes that are built on DSO. You could also have nodes that be integrate with DSO or website web two sites that integrate with DSO. And you know, there's a Twitter like a Twitter integrated with DSO would be huge for the ecosystem. But there's also these Coinbase NFTs, OpenSeas, Rarible, the NFT platforms out there who are not really running on Web3 and they should be running on Web3 and that they're a Web3 marketplace. So DSO has confirmed, Mossify has confirmed that DSO has reached out to three NFT properties, Coinbase NFT, OpenSea and Rarible. And they reached out to discuss if there's any potential overlap with integrating DSO, such as comments and identity. Obviously there's plenty of overlap if you truly want your Web3 marketplace to go in the direction of Web3. We've seen Coinbase NFT, they have comments under their NFTs and that's amazing. It's something that OpenSea and Rarible doesn't have, but these comments are on their own database. They're being stored on Coinbase's database. It's not on the blockchain. It's not, it's not open to anyone. It's not on the DSO blockchain. It's not on the Ethereum blockchain. It's just centralized comments and they could use decentralized comments. So Natter is chatting with OpenSea and Rarible this week and next week, which I think is super exciting. Although Multiply does caution that these discussions are super early stages and we don't know where they're going to go, but they did, but Multiply did say that they will update us after the conversations take place. Yeah. And I love this. This is something I think we've, we've been waiting for. I, I think that DSO should, the DSO Foundation should hire a position just for outreach to other platforms. So, I mean, there are literally thousands of possible integrations, tens of thousands. Uh, and if you had somebody that could make a few calls, make a few contacts every day with all different types of sites, I mean, it doesn't have to be crypto related at all. Uh, I think it could go a long way because you have one or two major integrations and DSO suddenly becomes something that people are talking a lot about. And I also think that Coinbase, uh, OpenSea, and Rarible, I can't imagine how they can integrate with into Web3 without turning to DSO because there is no other alternative unless they want to create their own blockchain. And we all know that that's not probably the best way to go about things. Not only are you going to have regulatory issues, but you're also going to have people claiming, hey, you're you're creating your own blockchain to do this. It's not really decentralized. So I, I love this. And I, I think that over the next several months, hopefully we can hear some good news. You know, if I was, if, if the DSO Foundation was a DAO, I would be putting in a proposal right now to spend five to $10 million of the 200 million that they have to somehow get a sit down meeting with Elon Musk. Like I'm sure you could pay someone five to $10 million, whether it's one of his associates or somebody really close to him to convince him to sit down for a 20 to 30 minute meeting. Because right um, now is, I feel like right now is the most important time to get Elon's ear. And before he decides what he's gonna do, how he's gonna you know, solve Twitter's problems, because Twitter has a lot of problems and there is no easy solve on web two, as far as I can see. There's always gonna be a line that has to be drawn somewhere and there's always going to be people who are going to be bitter about where or who draws that line. So my goal, if, if it was a doubt, I put that proposal out there and I think it would get approved. Spend five to $10 million to push for a sit down meeting with Elon Musk. What do you say?
I don't know. I don't know if I would vote on that. I, I think it might be kind of a waste of money. I think there's ways to do that for free. And I don't think you need to well, spend what $10 I'm, million. What I'm dollars. saying is you don't have to pay. It I think it's important. Actually, it's very important. Unless you actually I, get that sit down meeting. Yeah, but like, wouldn't but that be worth $10 million? You can't guarantee it. How are you going to spend $10 million to guarantee, hey, I'm going to get to talk to Elon? And it's kind of like, I don't, I don't like the idea of having you pay somebody $10 million to get a meeting with the guy. I think that's kind of ridiculous. I think, I think you do what you need to do. I think, it's I, I really think you important. could use $10 million to kind of create a whole department around trying to onboard other major projects and integrate into DSO. I think yeah, that might be if better. If Twitter way. integrates with DSO, all the rest are going to follow. Yeah, I don't know. Let's move on. So Dow Dow and Wavepool X, of course, Wavepool X is by DOZ. It's his new NFT platform for music and visual arts. Uh, they have an NFT giveaway on Twitter. So basically what you do is you follow Dow Dow underscore IO and Wavepool X on Twitter. Retweet a post, the post that Dow Dow made. Tag three friends who love music. Join the Wavepool X Discord, and then you're entered to win this NFT. And tonight at 10, at 7 p.m. Eastern time, there's a Twitter space for Wave Pool X. So definitely check that out. I love what DOZ is doing. He's so enthusiastic about, about DSO, about Wave Pool X. And he's been such a huge proponent of musicians on this platform. You, you can't not support what he's doing with Wave Pool X. And of course, Wave Pool X is going to be a DAO. Uh, and you can, you're going to be able to buy the Wave Pool X DAO tokens at one of these days. Yeah, DOZ, an early mover in this Dow Dow thing, and and I love what he's doing. Uh, can't find a better person on DSO. It was, he's just awesome. Got to meet him in LA. That was great. Definitely check it out. Uh, I, I think he's going to be doing some really awesome things, amazing things in the next few months. Something else, some other amazing people that we can touch on. Uh, Sandy Rose and Darian Parrish were both verified last night. And uh, Sandy was verified thanks to Alina Ferry making a post uh, to Fast Freddy, a reply to Fast Freddy. I don't know if Fast Freddy did it. He claims he didn't do it. Uh, so she's finally verified after the hashtag went viral. Um, but Darian Parrish as well, he deserves it so much. Uh, we got to eat brats with both of them uh, in LA a few weeks ago. And I knew that they were going to be verified. I could just sense it. Yes, me and Darian shared conversations over a rattlesnake bratwurst. Yes. Yeah, congratulations. You should have been pressing a button. I don't know why you didn't do that. Wait, I pressed it a few times. Okay. So Diso got a, had a mention on a huge YouTube channel yesterday. I guess, guess it was yesterday. It was in the last couple of days. Uh, on Stock Up with Larry Jones, they have 573,000 plus subscribers on their YouTube channel. The video that I'm referring to got 23,000 views so far. Uh, I think it's the last video they posted. If you check out Stock Up with Larry Jones, and about four minutes into the video, they they say how Diso is coming from behind, and as far as social media goes, you know, like everybody's talking about Twitter and Web two social media, and Diso is kind of sneaking up from behind. And Elon Musk is going to have to go in that direction, like go in the Web3 direction if he wants to prevail. So it was, it was a brief mention. It was interesting. Uh, they get a ton of views, so it's great for DSO. Yeah, and I saw they had, I think, 3,000 likes on the video. So that, that's how much traffic they're getting. I think our videos get like 15 likes or something at most. So kind of puts things in perspective. Uh, but yeah, let's move on. Clay Perry Music's doing something really cool. And I just saw this this morning. Uh, but he said he's building a DSO headquarters in uh, Horizon World. Horizon World, for those who don't know, is a metaverse like built within Oculus. So what's, what he's doing is he's building this DSO headquarters. He's already built like an auditorium. But he wants to build like classrooms where you can teach people about DSO, uh, onboard people regarding DSO. Uh, he also said that... Uh, that he's adding a museum where he's going to add DSO NFTs on the walls. I just think it's really cool because the metaverse is the future and Clay Perry is definitely trying to put DSO front and center in that future. Uh, I love the idea of trying to onboard people uh, via this uh, metaverse on Oculus. Yeah, go, way to go, Clay Perry Music. 
Yeah, and the top hashtags, number one was DSO, number two, NFT, number three, crypto, number four, verify women of DSO, and number five, music. All ones we've seen before. I see verify women of DSO is up there again. I don't think they were there la- yesterday. So congrats for that. Uh, I guess Alina Ferry more. needs to be verified next, right? Yeah, I, I, I think that would be a maybe a we move. Maybe we need a verify Alina Ferry hashtag. Right. Um, now the top earners, open prosperous top earners the last 24 hours. In total, $1,886 was earned by 1,229 creators. Uh, not a ton. Uh, I think that's a lot to do with Dow. Dow didn't sell too many uh, NFTs yesterday. Uh, seven creators earned at least, at least one DSO. One creator earned 10 DSO, and that creator was Dow Dow, earning $881. Uh, after Dow Dow, it was Supernovas who's still selling their NFTs for their Dow, followed by Sumer, who actually was a, a subject of a post by Mostify. Uh, he's trying to raise money for a bike, uh, so I think he probably did some, did some, raised some. Uh, Mossify was fourth, followed by Not Rookie, Reinvestor, Clove, Diego Robot, Mini Clout, and Right Click. So congrats to all of them. Congratulations. And there's three community events today. I mentioned one of them already. At 1 p.m. Eastern time on Antra is Web3 Wednesdays with uh, Caleb and Sean Tron. At 6 p.m. Eastern time on Clubhouse is Ladies on the Mic, one, Ladies on the Mic, uh, one, one hour edition. Uh, that's with chats today, Miss Katie Ann, Michelle Lord. Uh, those are great rooms. Um, seems like they're moving it to, to the nighttime now, which is interesting, or the late afternoon, depending on where you live. Uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Clubhouse or on Twitter Spaces is the aforementioned Dow Dow and Wave Pool X space. Uh, that's going to feature DOZ, of course, Rubar, Maintain the Reason, Mercury, Goldberry, Tropics, MP3, Extinct, Mossified, and more. So definitely check out those events 1 p.m., 6 p.m., and 7 p.m. today. And I think that's all the news we have for today. And we will get back at you tomorrow.